Did you know that if a black hole is spinning, it's not a perfect sphere? The singularity at the center is a ring instead of a single point, and you could extract energy from the actual black hole and use it as an engine. We've seen before on this channel that black holes can only have three properties, mass, electric charge, and angular momentum. In this video, we'll look at black holes that have mass and angular momentum, but no charge. These are called Kerr black holes, after New Zealand mathematician Roy Kerr, and we expect these to be a realistic description of astrophysical black holes. This is because we would expect the gravitational collapse that forms a black hole to neutralize any electric charge. And if a black hole did somehow form with charge, then we would expect it to pretty quickly attract particles and objects with the opposite charge and neutralize the black hole. Now, the angular momentum of these black holes gives them some super cool properties. First of all, while Schwarzschild black holes, which have no angular momentum, are perfect spheres, Kerr black holes are a bit squished. Just like the Earth, their rotation causes them to bulge at the center, resulting in a shape that's more like a mandarin or an oblate spheroid than a perfect sphere. In other words, the event horizon, the point of no return that if you cross means you can never escape the black hole, is sort of an ellipsoid shape rather than a sphere. Also, when a black hole is rotating, the singularity at the center is no longer a single point. It actually becomes a ring singularity, a ringularity. It's effectively a donut of infinite density that all paths inside the black hole head towards. If you're inside a Kerr black hole, your future is the ringularity. Interestingly, if the black hole were to have too much angular momentum, then according to the maths at least, the event horizon would actually cease to exist and leave the ring singularity exposed, what we call a naked singularity. There are a whole bunch of reasons why we think that naked singularities aren't physical and can't actually exist in the universe. So this tells us that there's an upper limit for how fast a black hole can actually spin. Another interesting consequence of spinning black holes is called frame dragging. This is the idea that because a black hole is such an extreme object with so much mass curving the space, when it rotates, it actually drags along the very fabric of nearby space. This is something we don't see for stationary black holes and it can lead to some really cool effects. It means that if you try to stay still near a spinning black hole, then you actually can't. The frame dragging of the black hole, space being pulled along by the black hole, would drag you along in the direction of the black hole spin. For a non-rotating black hole, if you have enough propulsion to overcome the gravitational pull, it's possible for you to remain stationary at any point outside the event horizon and only when you enter the black hole does it become impossible to remain stationary. For a Kerr black hole, on the other hand, even outside of the black hole, there are places where no amount of rocket power can keep you stationary, and the frame dragging forces you to move in the direction of the black hole's rotation. Similarly, if you were to begin falling radially towards a spinning black hole, the frame dragging would induce a non-radial component to your motion, and you end up falling towards the black hole on a curved path. Even though no forces actually act upon you, it produces a detectable gyroscopic precession called the lens thurring effect. This doesn't happen for a stationary black hole since there's no frame dragging in that case. The region in which it becomes impossible to remain stationary near a Kerr black hole is called the ergo region. And the surface or boundary of this region is called the ergosphere, which is another kind of horizon outside the black hole. The ergosphere is larger than the event horizon and has more of a squashed shape but touches the event horizon at the north and south poles of the black hole. The size of the ergo region isn't proportional to the radius of the event horizon, but rather it depends on the mass and more importantly, the angular momentum of the black hole. If the black hole were to slow down its rotation, the ergo region would begin to shrink. And if the black hole were to stop spinning completely, then the ergosphere would coincide exactly with the event horizon. As I said, nothing can remain stationary inside the ergo region. And even if you somehow sent a photon initially backwards against the rotation of the black hole, the frame dragging is so intense here that the photon will end up moving in the same direction as the black hole spin. Since this happens for photons, the fastest things in the universe because they're massless, it will definitely happen to you too, since you have mass. So inside the ergo region, you have to move in the direction of the spin as well. Exactly on the ergosphere, a photon sent against the spin could theoretically remain stationary but massive us would still be forced to move with the spin of the black hole. However, since the ergo region is outside the event horizon, it's actually still possible for particles or objects to escape the gravitational pull of the black hole despite the extreme frame dragging. If an object enters the ergo region, then it can actually escape by stealing some of the black hole's rotational energy, gaining enough energy to escape the ergo region. In order for an object or particle to pull off this Houdini-like great escape, 
a sacrifice must be made. The particle needs to decay into lower mass particles, or the object must break in two, with one of these smaller objects ready to be eaten up by the black hole. As one of these objects falls into the black hole, it sort of provides a slingshot for the other to escape the ergo region and escape the gravitational pull of the black hole. The extra energy that the escaping object gains in this slingshot can't come from thin air, and it's actually sapped from the rotation of the black hole, causing the black hole to lose energy and slow down its spin just a little bit. This process is called the Penrose process, and in theory, it could be repeated again and again and again, each time reducing the spin of the black hole. And in the extreme limit of this, a black hole would lose all of its angular momentum and would be left with a Schwarzschild black hole. No further energy can be extracted from the resulting Schwarzschild black hole, except maybe through quantum processes like Hawking radiation. This escaping process, it probably won't shock you to learn given its name, was first proposed by Roger Penrose in 1969 and is actually a possible explanation for an energy source for high energy phenomena, such as gamma ray bursts. Although the required conditions are very hard to realize and this is still a speculative statement at this point, so no promises on that one. Since a Schwarzschild black hole has no ergo region, we can conclude that as energy is sapped from the black hole and its angular momentum is reduced, its ergo region shrinks getting smaller and smaller until it's absorbed into the event horizon. Just as a side note, there's a theorem in black hole physics called the area theorem, which states that a black hole's event horizon can never decrease in size through any physical process, at least not through any classical process. Quantum processes like Hawking radiation are exempt from this theorem. You might think that draining energy from a black hole through the Penrose process might violate this theorem, but luckily, since the Penrose process is classical, and while it does extract energy from the black hole, it only reduces the size of the ergo region, and it leaves the event horizon unchanged. So we actually don't violate this theorem at all. What is interesting at this point is to consider the possibility of using a Kerr black hole as an engine, since we've seen that we can extract energy from them. Some advanced civilization with the capability to harness the power of black holes could do so with the Penrose process. They could build some engine around the black hole that fires particles into the ergo region of the black hole, and they decay causing a stream of particles to leave the ergo region with more energy than they entered with. This excess energy is a net gain, and it could be used to power whatever futuristic generator this hypothetical civilization is using. I hope you found this look at rotating black holes interesting and fun. Please consider subscribing if you did, and I hope to see you on the next video. Until next time, stay safe team. Bye!